Hi, I'm Gretchen, and today we are going to work on decoupaging some pumpkins. Um, this summer I learned how to decoupage shells and had so much fun with it that now I've pretty much tried to decoupage everything I can get my hands on. Um, and I tried my hand at pumpkins, and honestly, they were a lot trickier, but they're really rewarding because I think the end product turns out really well. So I'm going to today decoupage just this standard medium um, foam pumpkin. I know some people don't like foam pumpkins because they feel like they dent. I haven't had any problem with them and I like that there's a little bit of weight to them. Um, and you can pick any napkin you want. Today I'm going to do a pattern um, that's a little bit easier to work with and doesn't have a seam. So it's this green and white that's really fun. Um, and I'm doing that because I have a special order for some of those. But I have done everything from these blue and white scenes, which are spectacular. Um, and you just have to really work a little different with these because you're gonna wanna keep the main images pretty clean and even. Um, and it's really fun too if you start playing around with even different sizes. Like these are the little cocktail napkin size and this is the dinner napkin size. I can't tell if I have it right up. But um, the print is much bigger. So it's kind of fun to mix up if you're doing a grouping. The different prints um, so but today we're gonna work with this one and the first thing we're gonna do is you have to remove the backing and uh, the most exciting thing I learned in the last 10 days which is a sad statement of my life is that um, if you take painters tape it makes it really easy to pull them off you can wrap them around your finger or your hand I actually just put it here on the side of my table I don't think you can see it because of how I have it angled but basically I'm just gonna tap it down on the napkin and when I do that painter's tape here let's see if you can see it it doesn't really matter if you do or not but it's right down here so I'm pulling it up and when I do that I get a start and it comes off pretty cleanly and that may not be as exciting to you as it is to me um there is but okay so what I've done is already done that um for several different napkins and when you watch other tutorials, which I did trying to figure this out, um, I've ha I, everybody s tends to speak in absolutes. Like one woman was like, you know, you absolutely should never, ever, ever cut a napkin when you're decoupaging, only rip. Um, I say, play with it, see what works for you. I occasionally rip, but for the most part, I don't like how it turns out. The frayed edges, I feel like kind of look um, a little gunky. And for me, it, it adds kind of some texture to it that I don't really like. But my first piece of advice for you is start on these little tiny pumpkins. They're, you know, it's like low risk. They don't have to be perfect. But I got a really good feel for what napkins worked and didn't work, um, what patterns I liked, kind of how the colors turned out. And I did all that starting out on these little tiny ones because then they... If I don't like them, it's no big deal. They're just little. And they're only there. You can get a bag of them even 50% off for like five bucks. So they end up being like 50 cents a piece. But today we're going to work on the medium one. And I have already cut up my um, napkins. As I said, some people say only rip, never cut. I cut. And what I do is I actually use a paper cutter. Um, and I take, for this one, I used a cocktail napkin. Again, depending on the size pumpkin and the shape. You can pick a different napkin or whatever you've got. But on this one, I'm using, I like the cocktail napkins, or the, I'm sorry, the, the um, hand towels. I like the hand towels because they're longer, so they can fit a wider range of pumpkins. Um, and I've taken all the backing, all both layers off the back of these two. And now I'm ready to start putting them on my pumpkin. Um, one quick note about pumpkin size and shape. Tall pumpkins are easier than round. I'm doing the round one today because I feel like they're easy to find and they're everywhere. But these tall pumpkins are easier because it's easier to take a flat napkin and wrap it around a taller pumpkin without the bowing of a round. But if you do find these often, like these I found at Michael's, um, they're not white. So this one has been primed. This is just chalk paint that we've put over it. My husband's helping me because um, it's an extra layer of time that has been a big help for me to have him do. But anyway, so you can you can also use a taller pumpkin if you find one. And I would submit that that's a lot easier 
to start with. Um, but this is just easily accessible, so that's why I went with it. Um, in the beginning, I showed a shot of all the supplies you need, but I have been using for the pumpkins this Dura Clear gloss. I also have matte and ultra gloss and all of the different um, types of Dura Clear because I like trying different stuff out. But this particular one I like. I feel like it keeps the napkins from tearing. Um, and I just really like the finish that it gives. It's also really, um, it's a polyurethane, so I feel like it, it's gonna protect them so that they'll last. And I just take mine and open it up into a little glass jar because I'm making so many of them. I, when I first started doing it, I was pouring it on like a little artist palette and I just felt like it was kind of messier. Um, so what I'm gonna do first um, is take just a light layer and brush it on my pumpkin. One thing here that's really important is just to get it smooth and kind of even. You really don't want any big globs. And I'll tell you what will happen with that. If you do, your napkin will get super saturated and it's really hard to keep it from tearing. But I always start with kind of where I'm squaring off on the middle section and I've got my strip. And again, this is where I just took my hand towel and used my paper cutter and stripped it. I also take this edge off. If you see that edge, I take it off the sides. Um, some napkins have them, some don't. I don't like it because then it's gonna interrupt the pattern, but you can obviously do whatever you like. So I wanna start at the top. But the most important thing here is to really pay attention to what straight up and down is. Um, on this one, because things are curvier, it doesn't matter as much, but on some of them with stripes or certain patterns, um, it really makes a difference whether it looks like it's you know, lined up or not. And so I'm gonna cut just these corners so that I'm not squared off at the top. And then I'm gonna just take a little bit of saran wrap and I've got my little bit of Mod Podge and I'm gonna start working it. Oops. Got it a little wrinkled. So I'm just gonna work its way down from the top. And I've done two different things on these edges. Sometimes I just push the wrinkle into it and sometimes I've taken it and kind of snipped it and cut it. It's really half dozen of one or six of the other. I snip it more on things like this type of a napkin where I don't want this bird, for example, to get pulled where it's gonna look a little bit deformed. Um, so, but on this one, because it's not, it doesn't need to be that specific because we've got this pattern. I'm just gonna push it down. And this is one thing that's really the difference between how I've seen things done on a lot of tutorials. Most of them will say, put the layer under and then immediately put the layer over. I found when I was doing the shells, that's where I had a lot of kind of smushing and tearing of my napkins and I didn't like it. And so I started this where rather than, and, and some again will dry brush it on where they'll go straight they'll lay the napkin on top of a dry pumpkin and then dry brush it. Again, all of those things are just fine. I don't know why sometimes people in these craft videos talk like they're absolutes. I, I feel like it's a pumpkin. <laughs> it's not anything all that serious. Play around, see what works with you for you, and however that works out is really great. Um, but just know, I'm just kind of pointing it out because I know there are different methods and they all work. Um, what I did was look at some of the, the results of the methods and this sounds terrible, but I could see like even in the front of the video or at the end, the photos, and I didn't really like how the pumpkin looked. One thing I'm kind of finicky about is I want these to be really beautiful and I want to like put them in my home, but I also want to put them in the middle of a table. Um, and I feel like if they're up on a mantle, maybe they can be a little bit less, um, clean, but if they're in the middle of a table and people are like looking kind of right at them, I really want them to look the best they can. So again, I'm a little fussy, but that's just me. Um, so I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna rub it all the way down. Now I'm gonna try one more and then I'll break so that you don't have to watch me do this for each one. But, so what I'm gonna do here, and you can kind of see it on the top and the very bottom of that. Let me get this down just a little, there we go. Um, so I'm going to take this next one. Now I need to see that is where this is going to line up. So on this, I've got a big goofy wrinkle right there, but that's fine. 
Um, on this, I'm gonna start much lower because that's where this pattern is gonna come in. So if you can see what I'm saying, let me make sure it's on camera. I'm gonna look and I can I know that's the end of that one right there. So instead of lining this up up top, it's got quite a gap. And so I'm gonna need to trim this green off the top. I'm gonna keep that because at the end, what I do is I use that to do a line around the stem because I just like it to look finished. Um, so again, no matter what you're working on, I always try and keep at least two halves, a front and a back half of the pumpkin, where things really line up as closely as they can. Um, it's impossible to get it perfect around the whole pumpkin, but if I just sneak this right in here, you can see I'm going right in, and that right there has lined up perfectly with where that goes. Now, I'm gonna have a little bit of overlap, and I touch it probably more than I should, but I am I guess I've done so many now, I'm, I'm used to it. Where I have this little overlap, I'm gonna cut, and I'll tell you why. On these, um, patterns, the one hazard that you could get into is when they overlap, there's going to be a, an intensity of color there. So it looks a little bit more obvious. So I'm going to just try and keep as little overlap as I can. And I've got that pressed down. But the reason I can play with this, oh, I wanted to mention too, some people paint the entire pumpkin with, if it's smaller, with the Duraclear or the Mod Podge or whatever they're using before they start. And then there's paper sticking everywhere, which would drive me crazy. So I only paint the portion that I'm working on. And when I do that, I keep my hands clean, I keep my surface clean, and it gives me the ability to, to touch this stuff because there's not a lot of goop. Um, and like here, this is a little bit wrinkled. I can pick it back up because I have a, a, a you know, just a nice thin layer. Now that's not to say I won't occasionally um, tear it, but for the most part, it stays clean. So you can start to see that it's taking shape and I'll clean all that up. Um, but that's just to give you an idea kind of how nice it looks. Um, I'm not going to make you sit and watch me do that whole this all the way around. So I'm going to work on this and I will come back. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a patch um, because this piece is so this is a slim spot and it's too um, narrow for me. So I'm, I do two things. Sometimes I just, um, I only want to put the shellac on the section of the pumpkin. I'm going to try and keep it dry on that paper around it. And if, if you're working with them, one, one thing I meant to say too, is like this section, if I was just working with it, if it's really wet, I need to do a patch on that side too, but I'm going to let that dry a little bit first before I work with it because when I'm trying to do it, I can't really touch the pumpkin because if it's really wet, then my finger's just going to drag that napkin around. But I've got a section of napkin and this one's not going to be the perfect fit for this area, um, but it's going to be good enough. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put it in again because I've just put my varnish where that hole is. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to take my saran wrap because that really lets me kind of keep from picking at it with my hands. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and go in and remove as much as I can around the area. And I have to be really careful with this because I have a tendency to just pull it up and start cutting and I'll leave a little strip, which is fine. You can easily cover it, but it's just kind of a pain, especially when I had it covered in the first place. I was just getting impatient. Um, so I'm just gonna take little snips and now I'm gonna take my saran wrap and I can see, you can see right there where there's a little bit of darker, but it's so slight. You probably can't see it in the video, um, but it's so slight. That just gives you a way to patch it and I, I have taken like a um, pencil and kind of outlined where it is and then taken it off. But this seems to work just as well. And I 
kind of have it where it's on the pumpkin as long as I'm really careful and you have to keep your, your scissors clean for sure or else it'll just kind of grab the napkin. So we're just trying to keep everything, everything, we're trying to do everything we can to keep the pumpkin, um, the napkin on the pumpkin and not have it kind of, but if you look, and I'll, I'll put a thing over it. You can see a little bit of excess there where there's overage, but overall, I always um, use the term soft eyes. If you use soft eyes, what I wanna do when I'm making these is keep the errors to a minimum to where, unless you're really looking for them, you can't find them. Um, and so obviously the, the most important thing to remember when making them is it is virtually impossible to do this without wrinkles, without folds, without some imperfections. That's part of the deal. They're handmade um, and that's how it works. But if you can keep it to where they're not so glaring that the eye doesn't get caught, um, they overall look really lovely. Another quick tip, um, when you have, like I have this little tiny strip that needs to be covered. And one thing I've played around with that seems to be working for me is I will actually flip the napkin over. So the part that is going down on this section is gonna be the one that does not have the direct print on it, but it's the back. So it has a little bit less color and pigment to it. What I like about that is that that ends up being an easier way if you to camouflage because you can't really see it as well because it's not doubling that intense color up. So it's just something I started messing around with and it seems to have worked for me. Okay, so here's one of the most tedious parts. Um, and I just do this because I like the top to look kind of finished. But if I believe I mentioned in the beginning that I take the trim so like this particular one had a little green line around all of it so i trim it off the sides um, so that it doesn't create a line in my pumpkin but then i save them and or you've got them from the, the bottom um, and what i do is i lay and these i do tear with tiny pieces and i just put a little bit in this i use a little brush instead of that big giant one um, and i'm gonna go in and lay this just up to the spot where the um, stem hits. And I'm gonna gild this stem, so I'd like it to not really be going up on the stem because then you can see the paper. So I just kind of, and, and to get it to fit around this, you really have to go in with these tiny pieces. Um, and I would say this is more one of the more tedious parts um, and I need to clean it up a little bit, but you can see once I've laid them in, it just looks really nice and finished. Um, the other thing to share is obviously you're working on a pumpkin that's round and you can't do the bottom at the same time. So what I do is I, I go down and I leave kind of like this area, but you have to be really careful because you don't want it to sit on it or smush up because I have done them where there'll be big bumps. Um, but if you take, I'll be right back. Um, just use this pot um, that I did. So if you put something under it, then what I'll do is I'll kind of measure with my hands, okay, where is the bottom? Now I'm always gonna, I'm gonna cut out a different disc on the bottom and I'll show you that later. But what I'll do now is I'll go and get a sense of kind of how far I have to go under on this one. And then I'll just, it's like, just like a haircut. I'll go all the way around and cut. And of course you can't see that. There we go. So I'll cut, this was a shorter piece that I used, but I'll cut these so that I don't have that excess. Let's see if that's good. Okay, I've got one in there. Okay, so this part is now, it looks great. Um, really fairly dry, but not as dry as I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes to dry um, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna batten down the bottom, um, but you can see how it's coming together. And then we'll finish that part off, and then we'll do one more coat. Okay, so I have this angled down because I want you to see. Um, I'm using just the other side of this pot, 
to turn my pumpkin upside down so I can work on the bottom. Saran wrap is amazing though because it keeps it from sticking. Um, so I use it um, all the time. But what I do then now, okay, so see we've got this all at the end and, and you'll see it's pretty smooth up until where it's, it's not adhered to the pumpkin. Um, and I'm just gonna go around and the first thing I'm gonna do is find the flap that appears to be the one that's at the base, right? Because I don't wanna put this one down because it's gonna catch all of this. So this one is fully available without overlapping. So I'm gonna cut a strip and then cut these in half. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that for all of them. Um, it's a good thing I shaved my armpits because you're seeing a lot of them. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go in, do a light coat, and then I'm going to use my, and then I'm gonna put the center of that down first, then I'll overlap the left, and then I'm gonna do the right. You can trim those if you don't want the overlap, but I don't mind it. It's on the bottom of the pumpkin and it gives me a really clean look. Um, now I'm just gonna go around. Oh, that was a little dicey right there and do that with all of these. And you'll see like right here, I have this little chunk. It's no big deal. The great news is, is literally you can just, now this is again where I will tear. I'll just take a tiny piece of patch and put it on there. And I will do a little bit of dry brushing on that one just to make sure it's, or wet brushing to make sure it's um, down where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna go in and fold the rest of these into the bottom of my pumpkin. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the bottom now and you'll see it's not an even circle. I sometimes am a little bit more meticulous about this than I was on this one, but I had some longer on the other side, so I just went with it. One of the things I've been trying to do is to minimize my um, napkin waste because I hate to just, um, you know, discard most of it. But I've got this little square that I've cut out and I'm gonna just cover, let's see how it covers most of this. It's not gonna cover all. I could open up another napkin and, and um, do that. And you know what I probably would if I weren't making them, um, in, if I were making so many of them, um, I'd probably do that if this was just one I was doing at home. But for this, I don't have to because I can just piece together a couple that I have. Um, Let's see, I don't like how that tore. So now I'm gonna just finish up by covering this little last section. And I'm gonna cut around it so I don't have too much extra. And this then is almost done. Um, the last thing I'll do is go ahead and I'm gonna let this dry now um, probably for about say half an hour um, because I really want to keep some of the wetter areas. Um, I don't know if you can see but that looks pretty good. You can see some of the darker. Now some of that is, is because of the overlap. Some of it's because of the shellac that just went on so it won't all stay um, that intense. But what I'm gonna do now is let this dry up a little bit, then I will make sure I kind of can get out any major wrinkles and I will then put the top coat on. But so far it's looking good. And again, I can see some, some big wrinkles. Don't get too worried. It doesn't look absolutely perfect at this spot. Um, well, in fact, it never does, but it will be pretty close um, once we work with it. Okay, so this shellac coat, you're just gonna again go Top to bottom, I have it raised up. Um, I can just hold this. Um, I have it up on a pot so that I can get almost all the way under to the bottom, but not quite. And I'm just taking my brush and I'm going all the way down and then I'm going up. But I'm gonna also make sure that I don't have any kind of dripping. One thing I do is I'll look at it from the side. I'm using, um, oh, I love to bake. Um, and so I have this cake turner and that's actually what I've been using for my pumpkins. Um, I even have a little spot on the bottom where I've labeled it um, start, middle, you know halfway B 
because sometimes when I'm putting these coats on, I can't really tell where I've been. And that way I won't kind of, um, you know, double over where I've already been. But I also wanna go after I've done this coat up and down, that little center part on the bottom, after this is all dry, I'm gonna flip it and then I'll do the same there. But then I do wanna make sure that up top, I kind of just go, because of the way it dips in a little bit, it kind of likes to gather there. So I just wanna make sure I keep it as neat as possible up there um, without dragging the little pieces. So, as you can see, you have a pretty pumpkin. And it, um, this will take, oh, I don't know, probably 45 minutes. I have a, a fan that I just, when I'm in between stages for these, I put on in the room to kind of get them to dry a little bit quicker. One thing I don't do though, is have it shoot straight at the pumpkin. Cause I found that the, Sometimes I think it wrinkles um, and I don't like the way it looks. So if I have it, I just shoot it up in the air to keep the air circulating, but I don't put it directly on it because I think it makes it dry too quick. Okay, so the last piece after I've done my um, second shellac coat, I've only done one on this, but I'm just gonna show you this now, is I use, I use Tester's enamel on my shells. I kind of like the way it flows, but on this, I've been using this 18 karat gold leafing pen by Krylon. Um, and I think you can see it, but it's fantastic. It's basically a paint pen. I normally would wait until everything's dry, but on this, I'll just show you. I, you just are really just painting it on. And I'll do a second touch up coat of that after, but it looks so, so pretty when they're all done and um, pulled together. So if you made it this far and you actually watched the whole thing, Thanks. I hope this was helpful and that you have as much fun making these as I have. Um, if there's any big gap that I've left and you have questions, feel free to ask. If not, um, happy decoupaging.